there's going to be a lot of people hearing that who are going to say, oh, this sounds like the Benedict option. This sounds like retreating away from the world when we're supposed to be missionaries within the world. Mm-hmm. Um, what what do you say to that? I mean, First of all, I would say that that's a misunderstanding of what the Benedict, I don't know if you're familiar with the book or not. but I haven't the, read it, just familiar. No, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's not actually what he's advocating for. He's advocating for, he's he's saying that the world around us has become so decadent and, and so... Uh, I mean, corrupt might be a little bit strong, but um, the the trappings of the world are are so pressing and so prevalent and pervasive that to try to raise uh, families that retain that kind of in- innocence um, is is next to impossible. Let alone um, growing in virtue yourself for those of you who are already grown up. And so we need to start. We need to retreat in a way to our own um, communities where we can promote um, the truth of the natural law, the truth of faith, and where we can worship in a way that, um, that is worthy and just of God's glory, um, and then strengthen ourselves and strengthen ourselves in, in culture, in actual culture, um, because you don't get culture in in the world of multiculturalism mm-hmm. and, and cultural relativism. It's, it's nearly impossible without, without putting up some sort of walls around your own domestic culture or community culture. Mm-hmm. Um, because the other culture is so suffocating and loud that, mm-hmm. um, that it will drown out whatever kind of culture you cultivate yourself. Um, and so we need to, we need to retreat and, and strengthen some sort of community dimension of community and culture so that we can be sources of missionary uh, love and, and zeal and, and charity and service to the world. Um, but a lot of people look at that and just say, well, no, I mean, I even know people who refuse to homeschool because they have this idea in their minds that, you know, our kids are missionaries within the, 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 the school system. I'm just thinking, no, they are sheep among wolves. Yes. Like you, they're not ready for that, for one. You're just sacrificing them on the altar of, you know, the modern economy and, and creature comforts and things like that. So um, would you say that that's something like the... the, the or, well, okay, so what would you say to people who object to this notion of the Benedict Option or that we shouldn't be retreating away? We should be, we should be sending ourselves out. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And I, I think that... Sometimes you just have to leave the flesh pots of Egypt. I mean, it's not mm. that's um, this isn't out of the ordinary for the people of God. You know, this is this is actually our pattern. Um, and uh, when you do that, you know, there's obviously evangelism in the long game, uh, which is uh, evangelism by procreation. And if you create children that are live in a state of grace and love God, mm. they're going to redeem, you know, the world. You're going to make saints. I mean, that's really how you save right. the city. Um, yes. And and I think that that's, that's what will happen. And especially if they're innocent and inept and ignorant of all the urbane grotesqueries of the city. And, and that's, but rather in love with God. And that's, mm-hmm. that's how they... That's how the city is saved, and people will be attracted to that. And mm-hmm. I think that that's so. That's that's goal number one. You know, is just living within that natural order of procreating, and then educating your children in the faith, so that they can be saints, and mm-hmm. and helping you know working on yourself in the same way. And because there, I think another distraction in this is the the Catholic community, and I it's it's. It's this thing that I understand the longing for because we do not have communities in the modern era at all. You know, no. we're so isolated from each other. We're competitive and vicious and it's horrible. Um, and so I understand why we, we long for an idea, you know, of community. Um, but in in the end, we, it's impossible unless the Lord builds the house. You know, those who labor will build in vain. It's we can't do it without grace. And so the the primacy of being in a state of grace, I just think is, I, I mean, it's so simple. It sounds too simple to say this, and it is, but it's like, if that... But unattainable at the same time in the way that the world is arranged for us these days. It's, it well, is simple, but somehow 
not many people seem to enjoy it. Yes, and I, and I do. I was um, I was among them before I discovered um, the tradition of the church, and and even using you know the word tradition, it sounds like such a label. But I mean, you know, like technically, the the depository of um, of God's love and and truth to us. Yeah. That is in the tradition, literally from Christ down through the, the, the centuries to us, preserved yeah. in tradition. Yeah. And and if we if we think we're more creative than that, then we have stepped outside of the realm of grace. And it without that we can do nothing. It's over. And that's why I think it's it's no exaggeration to say we must return to God's truth, to the tradition, and to um priests that are formed in it otherwise we're stuck with modern psychobabble which mm. where there is no grace and no. um you know it, there might be sacramental grace but it is it is immensely hindered by our inability to be disposed to receive it and cooperate with it 